Hi everyone, Herzog Chemist once again, and last week I published a video about the Cambridge Companion to American Science Fiction, and some of you asked me to talk about other books in this collection, other academic books in this series, and especially about the Cambridge Companion to Thomas Pynchon, considering that many of you guys are big Pynchon fans. I have to admit, I do not think the Cambridge Companion to Thomas Pynchon is one of the best in the series. It suffers from the series' main problem, I talked a bit about it in the other video, which is that the essays in it, you know, there are essays about some sides of Pynchon's poetics, about each one of his major works, they tend to be quite random, they tend to be to feel a little bit like, you know, nuggets of what Pynchon criticism may be. Maybe they consider, you know, a single aspect of his major novels, a single side of it, a single element of its plot, but that's in, in many ways it's inevitable, because considering the scope of Pynchon's novels, you know, so many people dedicate their careers studying them, of course you can't expect a, you know, 150 page book to exhaust these topics or even to offer some a, a satisfying introduction into, you know, the state of scholarship about them. It doesn't mean the, you know, this Cambridge Companion is useless, it's absolutely worth your time if you find a copy at a library nearby. If you're a college student, your university probably will have a copy for a series of reasons. Uh, first, because of course, getting, an, uh, getting a nugget, getting a taste of what, of what pension scholarship is, it's good, uh, you know, it's still something, and also, and most notably, because this book features so many top-notch great scholars. It's edited by Inger Dalsgaard, Luke Herman, and Brian McHale, which are among the most important Pynchon scholars out there. Brian McHale, in particular, I'm a huge fan of his, he's probably my favorite star scholar alongside uh, S.T. Joshi, probably. And there's essays in this collection by Steven Weisenberger, who has written extensively and seminal works about Gravity's Rainbow. There's essays in here by Andrew Bereston. There are so many major scholars. And even if you just get this collection or, you know, check this collection out and, you know, uh, note down the names of all these scholars and then check out what they have to say about Pynchon and all their major works and monographs about the guy, you'll, if you, I mean, if you read all of those books, you have become a Pynchon scholar yourself and you have explored so many beautiful works that will expand how you read and how you approach Pynchon and postmodernism in general and, you know, 20th century literature in general. Also, the sections that explore some sides and elements of Pynchon's poetics and are a bit more general tend to be better and less specific and random in their topic than the sections on specific books. And, you know, for instance, McHale's section on postmodernism and Pynchon offers a beautiful interpretation on how Pynchon, you know, Pynchon's model of postmodernism is almost a movement onto itself, and some of its absurdities are explored and explored and changed throughout his production. He creates beautiful links between all of his books. It's, you know, it's one of those uh, those chapters, those essays that send your synapses on fire. If you are a Pynchon fan, let alone a Pynchon scholar, you have to read this stuff. You won't regret it. And in general, uh, the introduction is going to be awesome because it talks a lot about the state of uh, Pynchon studies, about Pynchon's role within literary studies and within literature in general. The conclusion, the coda by Andrew Beresson is awesome. It's about, you know, how to read Pynchon because Pynchon is such a famously difficult writer and he discusses how it is possible to read him even just for the emotional impact of, of, the, of his book, other than for all the clever stuff he puts into them, or because of their, you know, awesome but complicated plot or bizarre characters and such. Uh, and there's also a biographical note that is going to be fun for the most curious among them, and let's face it, we shouldn't be, but we are all a bit curious about Thomas Pynchon as a man. Overall, it's a great starting point for your studies on Thomas Pynchon and for, uh, you know, discovering what other people have to say about such a stimulating writer. If you have it, if you can find it at a library nearby, by all means, check it out. I'm not sure, what I'm trying to say is I'm not sure you want to fork out $30 to buy it on Amazon. Um, it's that money is probably better invested in some of the books by the guys I've mentioned, books by Brian McHale, books by Steven Weisenberger, and so on. 
Do let me know what you think about this collection and about these colors if you've had a chance to read them. Do let me know if you'd like me to talk about other academic works and those kinds of things. I'm guessing they may sound boring to, you know, uh, people who are not in academia themselves, but let me know. And thank you for watching once again, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.